All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and using fundamental analysis to determine the maximum price that it could reach theoretically. Um, so this is in no way a real prediction. This is just what using the method of first principles to determine what the maximum price could potentially go to. Um, so what I mean by first principles is that for example, if I'm using a lot of people, most predictions that I've seen on YouTube use previous price data to ascertain what the future price of Bitcoin will be, or they use like future multiples that Bitcoin grew. So for example, I'll get this one up here. So for example, one example of a, a price prediction is saying, okay, from Bitcoin's first peak to Bitcoin's second peak, peak was a 40x or thereabouts and big and the, from bitcoin's second peak to bitcoin's third peak was a 20x therefore we can infer that bitcoin's third peak which hasn't happened or fourth peak which hasn't happened yet will be a 10x because it's gone from 40x to 20x now the next one will be a 10x so from peak to peak that would give us a price of 200,000 so that would be uh, 20,000 multiplied by 10 so 10x so a 10x so that's an example of a price prediction and personally i think they're like the most they're useful to an extent but the most useless useless price prediction really uh they're yeah they're the most useless in my opinion so they should be paid the smallest amount of attention so i what i'm going to show you in this video i believe to be the most useful price predictions for bitcoin so it's the method of first principles so it's like saying okay we have no idea what the price of bitcoin we have no price history of bitcoin at all uh what is the value we can ascertain to this asset class with no idea no information about its price ever so what 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 value could we assign to this uh asset yeah so i tried to find videos like this online or on youtube and i couldn't so i decided to make it myself so if you appreciate this i hugely hugely appreciate if you could drop me a like uh, this is going to be one of my best videos ever, I think, I hope. Uh, please subscribe if you're interested in this kind of videos. I usually talk about stock market videos, so investing in general. So just to let you know, I'm 50% invested in stocks, I'm 50% in crypto, and I'm looking into buying some gold soon as well. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe. Okay, with all that said, let's get straight into the video. I'll just show you a couple of ways that people use previous price to predict the future price. And then we'll get into the fundamental value of Bitcoin uh, without any price predictions, without any previous pri price information. So, so as you can see on your screen right now, uh, some people like to use these logarithmic regression lines. So they fit the uh, regression lines to the peak in this, in this example and to the bottoms. And they extend these regression lines out into the future. But if you look before the last peak these logarithmic regression lines would look different without the current price for the current peak in it so essentially they're just redrawn every peak to match the previous data so they kind of give us a idea of where the price could go but there's no there's no fundamental reason that the price has to do that you know it's just kind of saying oh this the price did this previously so we'll do it in the future it is a little bit useful but there's no inherent value or reasoning to why that should happen by itself you know what i mean okay so next we're going to look at the stock to flow model and this is the best um price predictor using previous price information this model kind of uses the previous price to uh predict the future price but i think it's the most it has the most actual reasoning and weight behind it and then after that, once we've looked at the stock to flow, we'll look at more fundamental reasons of analyzing what Bitcoin's value could be without any price uh, whatsoever. So I'm just going to quickly explain what stock to flow is. If you don't know, I'll do my best to explain it right now. OK, so the stock to flow basically means so say there's uh, in the entire world, there's one ton of gold. So 1000 kilos of gold in the entire world. Every year, 
there is 100 kilos more of gold mined. This is just an example. These aren't, uh, these aren't the figures at all, but just for an example. So there's one ton in the world and there's 100 kilos more being mined every year. So for that year, there's a stock to flow ratio of 10 because there's a stock of 1000 kilos and there's a new incoming flow of 100 kilos. So 10 to one. So stock to flow ratio, 10 to one. Um, with Bitcoin, the stock to flow ratio gets higher and higher and higher because the, the, the current stock of Bitcoin is increasing as more and more Bitcoin is being mined. However, the flow gets cut in half every, roughly every four years with the Bitcoin halving. If you want more details on everything, on how Bitcoin works, I, 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 I'd be very happy to make videos of that. Just give me a comment below. But I'm not going to go too in depth in that right now. Right, so I just, I just ran to grab this book. So if you're interested in learning about Bitcoin, this is the best book about book, Bitcoin that there is. Well, it's the only book I've read, but it's probably the best one. It's called the Bitcoin Standard. So that will give you a f complete understanding of Bitcoin. I'll link it in the description for you. Okay, so now you kind of understand how stock to flow works. Let's have a look at the graph and show you how this predicts the price. So on this graph here, the price of Bitcoin is the red dots and the stock to flow ratio is the blue line. So basically this graph is uh, two different graphs superimposed on top of each other. So the Bitcoin price, the on the Y axis is the price, but the mining difficult, the stock to flow ratio is not, there's, there's no, uh, there's no values unfortunately for it on the right axis but we we have to remember like the the stock to flow ratio has nothing to do with the price really so it's actually just superimposed the price is just superimposed on the stock to flow so the stock to flow ratio started at zero and it goes up to maybe let's say 110 or 120 or thereabouts at the moment it's roughly around 50 i think but with the halving the the stock to flow ratio jumps quite a lot as you can see so it's also in a logarithmic growth uh, okay so why does the stock to fl flow ratio when it's superimposed onto the price why does it kind of give these nice why does it kind of seem to match the next jump kind of puts us in the six figure marks and we could kind of hover around that price and then the one after that puts us in the one million dollar mark so why does the stock to flow ratio kind of work in that sense? Well, the reason being, so the biggest net sellers of Bitcoin are the Bitcoin miners. So if I have to pay, you know, for every one Bitcoin that I mine, if I have to pay two or 3,000 in electricity and maintenance for the warehouse and staffing prices, for every Bitcoin I mine, I pay three grand. Well, I'm not going to, if the price drops below 3,000, for a bit for one bitcoin i'm not going to continue mining because i'm going to be losing money to mine it so therefore i'm going to shut, shut off my miner so if um, i shut off my miner i'm not going to be getting any bitcoin so i'm not going to be selling the bitcoin so the the bitcoin price won't c continue decreasing because there's going to be less sellers if the price drops so um, it kind of follows the stock to flow ratio in that sense okay so there's a couple of scenarios that have to play out for us to get to those higher level Bitcoin price predictions. Um, so we're going to start with the first one and the second one is where we'll find that $5 million Bitcoin that is in the thumbnail. So it is actually plausible once you actually look at the numbers. So make sure you stick around to see how that's possible and why in fact it's not, it's not entirely implausible. Okay, so the first fundamental prediction for Bitcoin's price is to compare Bitcoin's current market cap with the current market cap for gold. So in this prediction, we're saying that Bitcoin could get to the same level as of value that all the gold in the world has. So people are willing to put people averaged worldwide are willing to put as much money into Bitcoin as they have put into gold, because it doesn't really matter how much Bitcoin there is or how much gold there is. All that matters is the value people, the amount of money that's put into it will make its value. So it doesn't matter if there's 
one thousand kilos of gold or twenty thousand kilos of gold if people put the same amount of money into it it will have the same market cap the price per ounce will be different but the market cap will be the same so why would people value bitcoin as much as gold is currently valued now gold is valued so this isn't this is still a hopeful outcome that bitcoin comes as valuable as gold like i'm not in no way saying that this is a for sure thing but it is definitely possible it, the reason bitcoin has a better argument as, as being a good store of value is in comparison to gold well definitely in, in comparison to actual fiat currency but let's just run through so bitcoin is scarce there's only 21 million ever to be created so just like gold there's only a certain amount in the earth's core or sorry in the earth's crust that we can get um it can't be created by governments like fiat currencies same with gold uh, but the advantages over gold is that you can send it worldwide uh, in an instant it's harder to steal kind of uh, you don't have to pay storage facilities to keep it you can just keep a fucking passphrase in your head so yeah as we like there there's more arguments for bitcoin but i'm not going to run through everything because this is already going to be a really long video but there there is still quite a leap to get to bitcoin's mar or to sorry to gold's market cap from where it is now so bitcoin's current market cap is around 160 million uh, and gold's market cap is r between so like there's it's hard to estimate because no one knows how much gold is in reserves like a lot of um central banks keep gold and they're not they won't disclose or they'll kind of fudge the numbers to how much they actually have so if we put bitcoin's market cap at the market cap of gold uh, which is anywhere between 7 and 15 trillion no one knows for certain but it's probably somewhere on the lower end so let's say 10 trillion or so that would give us a price for one bitcoin at 350 to 580 thousand so if we add in more of the use cases for Bitcoin, for example, I have on the, on the slide here that it's used for remittances. So it's obviously really useful for remittances and to pass wealth outside of countries with capital controls and to transact in countries with hyperinflation. It might be easier to use Bitcoin than to use gold in those countries. But if there's continuous speculation as well and it kind of comes the money of the internet to send long distance money, we I just kind of add in another 350,000 to get us to 1 million but the second two those second two prices are completely speculation and there's no fundamental reasoning behind them it was just to say that there's other use cases on top of being a store of value like gold so just to you can kind of add whatever value you think those use cases could be okay so i don't know how realistic the potential for bitcoin to it doesn't have to replace gold but at least get to the same value as gold so i don't know how likely you think that is or unlikely personally obviously i believe it will it will get to that value and potentially outtake gold's value as uh, so otherwise i wouldn't have invested a lot of my my hard-earned money into bitcoin but now we're going to look at an even more outlandish prediction for bitcoin uh, also a fundamental prediction so in this prediction what would need to happen is bitcoin would have to become a global reserve currency just like gold used to be okay so how likely is it that bitcoin becomes a global reserve currency well personally i have no idea and no one really does but i don't think it's impossible um the reason being if we look at all the problems that have been happening recently with the huge amounts of inflation, uh, huge amounts of printing and the um, reduction in the power of the US dollar as the reserve currency, there's nothing that can be done like the the US is on the way out and it, the, only way, the only way it can continue is really by printing more money which further deflates its power. So there is going to be a change in the next one to 20 years. Uh, but what that change will be, who knows? Uh, maybe there is a basket of reserve currencies. Maybe it becomes the Chinese uh, yuan. 
or maybe it goes back to gold but maybe it goes to bitcoin the central bank chairman he advocated for a reserve currency that came from the private sector so something like libra or a digital currency now obviously i think libra couldn't become the or something that came from a centralized organization couldn't become the reserve currency because that gives that organization far too much power and it can also be manipulated but ma- manipulated by different governments and the reason they don't want the central bank of england guy doesn't want another reserve currency from a country because there's no clear good currency at the moment and to give that power to someone is just too much power for one country at the moment so that's why he's calling for something from the private sector which obviously sounds like Bitcoin would be the ideal candidate for that, if not gold. Ray Dalio has been talking about these long-term debt cycles where um, money is first backed by something hard, by a hard money, so it's backed by gold. Then eventually the government needs to fund a war or it needs to fund something, it, it needs more money. So basically it stops being backed by gold. So uh, at one stage, $32 could be handed in for one ounce of gold. But now, obviously, the amount of dollars has been printed, 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 and it's no longer backed by gold. So you can't exchange $32 for one, one ounce of gold. Now you need $1,600. So it just shows how much the the value of the dollar has deflated. But yeah, so eventually we diverge from hard money and the debt racks up, racks up, racks up. And eventually this debt collapses and we go back to some sort of hard money. So this has happened a few times, a few cycles in the past where we've done this repeatedly and gone back to, it's happened many, many times. And Ray, Ray Dalio has talked about this. So every 50 to 70 years or even 100 years, we go back to hard money and we're currently in a huge amount of debt. So this could happen in the next year or the next 20 years. Who knows when it's going to happen? But it could happen and Bitcoin could be the future global reserve currency. I'm not going to go through everything, the advantages that having Bitcoin as a global reserve currency would give. But just quickly, like there would be no foreign exchange markets, which are trillions of dollars a day and just like millions of jobs. And the IMF, which regulates all the currencies, like there's all that just wasted, wasted because of the different currencies that there are that are you know, backed by nothing. So there's just so much excess uh, workforce needed for something that doesn't create any value. Whereas if everything was backed by Bitcoin, $1 would be worth 0.01 Bitcoin, would be backed by 0.01 Bitcoin, 21 would be backed by 0.01 Bitcoin, and it would always remain like that. And So you could just easily say $1 exchange for 21 etc etc all over the world there's just a set price for the currency uh backed by bitcoin and money uh countries can't inflate their money supply if their currency is backed by bitcoin because then they need if they do that they're going to need to get more bitcoin in case people want to cash out their cash for bitcoin so people think that bitcoin could become uh everyone there would be no other currencies there would just be bitcoin and people would transact, you buy your coffees with Bitcoin. And although this sounds great, unfortunately, it is pretty much impossible. The reason uh, being that um, Bitcoin can't handle that many transactions. There's going to have to be some currencies built on top of Bitcoin uh, to make that possible. Uh, it's just too far too many transactions in the world. And the way Bitcoin works is that everyone kind of right, records every transaction on the B- Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, so obviously you can't really scale that up to infinity because that would just require ridiculous amounts of computing power and storage. So finally, um, how do we get this $5 million prediction? Well, if we take all the money that's currently in the world, all the value that's in the banks and in people's bank accounts, in people's pockets, under people's mattresses, there's a money supply. No one knows exactly how much there is, but it's in it's in and around 80 trillion dollars so if we extend out the again if we say there's only 21 million bitcoins 
And if all that value has to be backed by Bitcoin, what's the value of Bitcoin then? Well, the value will be 5 million per Bitcoin because there's only 21 million. So 21 million multiplied by 5 million gives us that 80 trillion. Now, this is likely to increase over the next year because of inflation. But let's just say in today's dollars, it will be worth 5 million per Bitcoin if Bitcoin becomes a global reserve currency. So that's how we get to the $5 million per Bitcoin prediction using fundamental analysis. If you enjoyed this video, I'd hugely appreciate it if you could drop me a like. If you want similar videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you want my top three stocks at the moment, I'll link that video up there or up there. I forget which way it is. Um, I really, really appreciate you watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.